third function of the law, to encourage believers in obedience. The third and principal function of the law, and the one most closely connected with the purpose for which it was given, relates to believers whose hearts are already ruled and quickened by God's Spirit. For although they have the law written in their hearts by the finger of God, although, that is, led by the Holy Spirit, they are moved by the wish to obey God, they nevertheless benefit in two ways from the law. The law is, first, a splendid instrument for giving them each day a better and more confident understanding of God's will to which they aspire, and for confirming them in their knowledge of it. In the same way, a servant, though resolved in his heart to serve his master well and to please him in all things, needs an intimate grasp and a sound appreciation of his master's character and ways so as to adapt to them. None of us should exempt himself from this necessity, for no one has yet attained such wisdom as to be incapable, through the law's daily instruction, of making progress and gaining a clearer understanding of God's will. Furthermore, because we need not only teaching but also encouragement, God's servant will find the law useful in that, by frequently meditating on it, he will be stirred to obey God, to persevere in obedience, and to turn away from his faults. In this way the saints must earnestly press on, since however ready they are to strive to do good, they are always held back by the indolence and heaviness of the flesh, with the result that they never fully do their duty. The law is like a whip to our flesh to impel it to work, just as continual blows are needed to get an ass to move forward. Or, to put it more plainly, since the spiritual man is not yet freed from the burden of his flesh, the law will be a constant goad to him to stop him growing sleepy or dull. This function was what David had in mind when he extolled God's law with fervent praise, saying, The law of the Lord is spotless, converting the soul. The commandments of God are righteous, rejoicing the heart. Again, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to show me my way, with all the verses which follow. There is no conflict here with the passages from Paul which were cited above, and where we are shown not what benefits the law offers to the already regenerate believer, but what it offers to man in general. By contrast, the prophet here demonstrates how usefully the Lord instructs his servants by the teaching of the law, when he inwardly inspires their hearts to follow it.